All right, we're on page uh, 26 now in the second pace. And I'm looking at a diagram here that has a uh, photograph of a traffic cone. <clears throat> and remember my tip in the other uh, video was to um, take the diagram and redraw it on scrap paper, okay? So you kind of pull that black and white picture out from behind it and just label the parts. Let's look at what's given. Isosceles ABC with AB congruent to AC. So AB is congruent to AC. So we know that. We can label it because that's given. We also know it's isosceles. So step one is um, obviously just listing what's given, right? And you already know what the last step four will be, and that is to say that angle one is congruent to angle two. We've got we to get there, though. So we have to make two statements in the meantime. Now, in the last few pages, you've learned a new theorem. And again, this is another tip for you. It may be unfamiliar. It may not be something that you're comfortable using yet, but the whole reason that they covered it in the recent pages is because they want you to think about how can I use this. So step two, um, if I know these two sides are congruent and they told me it's isosceles, can I with confidence say that this angle is congruent to this angle? So that'd be like saying angle A, B, C is congruent to angle A, C, whoop, A, C, B, okay? Can I say that with confidence? And the answer is yes. If these two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite those two sides are congruent. And we actually have a uh, statement. One of our um, theorems or postulates was, I believe it's number, well, theorem one, the one we just had, the isosceles triangle theorem, okay? And if you look back, let's see what page that was on. <clears throat> Top of page 24. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite are congruent. The isosceles triangle theorem, okay? So we'll write that down. We can actually just, they just let us write the name. Um, isosceles triangle theorem, theorem one, okay? Now that we know these two angles are congruent, um, can we somehow get to the point where we can say these two angles out here are congruent? They really only give us one more space. There's one more major point that we need to make. So let's think about what is the relationship between this angle and angle one, or between this angle and angle two? What's this relationship here? We have a line meeting a line. So these two angles are supplementary, okay? So if these angles are supplementary, if two angles are, if an angle, well, let's first state that they're supplementary, okay? So if a line meets a line, angle one and angle ABC are supplementary. So I think we actually have to make a statement that says angle one and angle ABC are supplementary. And then angle two and angle ACB are supplementary. Once we can state that they are supplementary and that is one of our theorems. I believe it's theorem nine, that if one line meets another line, the angles formed are supplementary. So we can tell that from the diagram, all right? That's obvious, a line meets a line, these angles formed are supplementary. So theorem nine proves that, and now we can jump to this last statement, angle one is congruent to angle two, and we have a theorem, or rather a postulate for that, and let's see if you look back, was it from the last piece? Postulate 11, I believe it is. And so let's summarize it in, in symbols and brief words. Angles supplementary to congruent angles are congruent. 
So since these two are congruent, and these two are supplements of congruent angles, then we can come to the conclusion that they are indeed congruent. All right? So I, we, we really kind of walked through all the steps of this and kind of fill, told you what you need to fill in there. But I want you to learn from this a couple of things, not just what the answer is, but see the steps involved. Label, first of all, redraw the diagram. Secondly, label the parts they give you. Um, thirdly, you know, see where am I headed with this? What am I supposed to prove? And what are the missing steps to get, for, you know, from one point to the other? And we've talked through this enough that you should be able to easily fill in the rest of this problem.